Sitting in my closet, I'm having a conversation with the boogeyman. Except for his lack of a face, he's not all that bad. He is crouched at the back of my closet, underneath my old school sweaters, while I perched at the mouth of the closet. With a monotone voice, he asks me how I felt. I'm not sure, really. Should I be scared? He wonders if I'm ever sure of anything. Looking at his pale, elongated fingers, I mention, I'm sure you could use a manicure. <laughs> then I laugh, because it rhymes. Pulling himself closer to me, he asks why I have to make a joke out of everything. I was going to answer with a smirk, I'm not sure. But then I notice he's naked, naked with no anatomy. His pale, translucent skin is pulled so tightly over his frame, making every bone shut out sharply from his body. He is so small, the size of a malnourished child. He gives off an air of innocence. I would have wanted to hold him if I hadn't seen his skin ripple with hidden malice. He makes me want to tell him the truth. I'm afraid to die. So I try to make a joke about everything in life. Shrugging his bare white shoulders, he tells me it's inevitable, that everyone is going to die. Getting frustrated, I move myself deeper into the closet, getting closer to the boogeyman so I could argue with him about my stupid mortality, as if arguing about it would make it go away. The cold radiates from him in waves. Holding my face with cold hands, I shake my head in frustration. I know everyone's gonna die. I know I'm gonna die. But I don't want to. I can't die. I wish I didn't know I had an expired date. I'll give anything to live in ignorant bliss. Sometimes I can feel my mortality. I can feel the meat hanging on my bones. And they can't wait, can't friggin' wait to drop off and rot. My heart pumps. It sounds to me like a ticking clock, pounding away my time, waiting for it to finally stop. My heart can't wait to retire, so it can relax in my wooden coffin. He presses my back with the palm of his hand, as if to comfort me. But I can't help but shiver. His hand feels like dead fish on my skin. Taking away his hand, he moves into the familiar and friendly Indian position. We are so close now, our knees are almost touching. Then joke away if that's how you cope. If that's how you choose to stay sane. Everyone has their own way of keeping the demons at bay. I myself, I like to hide things. He stiffens. What's your favorite season? The sudden change of topic makes me look up. His body is out from the shadows. He is no longer in the familiar and friendly Indian position. So quickly I hadn't noticed till now he had positioned himself into a crouch where I had first sat at the opening of the closet. The single lamp in my room radiates behind him, giving me my first real look at the boogeyman. I realize he does have eyes. I realize why I couldn't see them before, why no one should see them. I realize he's staring at me. Suppressing the madness welling up inside me, I swallow my heart and try not to stammer. Well, what kind of things do you like to hide? With every word of that question, the closet door inches shut. Almost unseen, unless you were staring at it wide-eyed. A single beam from my room laid vertically across my left eye. Without an answer, he grinned a wide, jagged grin. Without an answer, he shut the door.